Hello everyone, Darren here, and this is just a quick video to show you how to get your City Skylines game to look the same as my current ongoing series, or basically what you're seeing right in front of you now. So, when choosing the mods for this series, I wanted it to look fairly realistic, but not to tank the frame rate too much, knowing that people were going to be watching, and that might be a little annoying, especially as the city starts to grow. You can find great mod guides and graphical overhauls to make ultra-realistic looking stuff, but it does really tank performance especially as the city starts to get bigger or as you expand the map further and further out. So I just wanted to mention that this isn't going to be a list or a best of graphics kind of guide. It's just what I used for my series. I'm making the video because a lot of people asked me to. They said they chose all the mods that I chose, but they couldn't quite get it looking how I've got my game looking. So if you like the look of this, stay tuned and I'll talk you through the mods and what to do to get them to this stage. So, let's quickly go over the mods, and then I'll take you through the settings, and that's going to be everything you'll need to know. Now, the entire collection, or the full mod list, is now in the description. It's in a single link. It's going to take you to the Steam Workshop, where I've made a collection, where I've got both of my gameplay mods and my graphical mods all together. I thought about separating the list, but I'd, I'd just rather leave it as one. So, effectively, what you need to know if you just are interested in the graphical mods, it's everything before the mod 81 tiles 2. Everything before here is all graphically related, and then everything after here is either gameplay related or it might be UI related or something to do with maybe the fine precision of moving things and the placement of props and just, you know, a bit more of the granular gameplay elements. So just to reiterate, everything above 81 tiles 2 you'll want to grab if you just want to get the graphical elements. So, the first two mods are just dependency mods, Harmony 2.2, etc, and Patch Loader mod. These are going to help other mods load and be compatible with each other. To be honest, I don't think the graphical ones really have much of an effect on this, so it's really just there just in case you were to run into issues. I don't think you actually need them, but to be safe, I don't think they do any harm, so just get these two. Next up then is Hearts Hill, a vanilla map. So this is obviously the map that we're playing on that you have to choose at the beginning of the game. It's an excellent map. It says it's a vanilla map because it means that you don't need any other mods to play with it. So it's just straight up, just download this and it just works out of the box. Now, it's a great map as well because, in effect, it has all the different resource types available. It's got fertile land, ore industry and oil industry aplenty. It has obviously land and sea and then it has air connections, rail connections and sea lane connections as well as obviously high highway connections. So it's just a fantastic like starting map and it obviously just looks visually gorgeous I think. It's nice variety. The kind of woodland areas, the curvy river, the oxbow lake, the farmland, the mountains in the distance. It's just a beautiful map. So shout out to Sedai who obviously made it and I recommend this one a lot. The next mod then is going to be Relight. So this mod allows customization of certain lighting elements and also comes with some baked in LUTs. Now these are effectively filters. So first we're going to go to our graphics settings and then inside of preferences we'll see here color correction override. Now I've got mine set to Relight Film. So let's just click Relight Film and if you scroll you can actually scroll through them and obviously in the background you can see like the colors are sort of changing. It is just post processing filters effectively. So you can change this, it doesn't really matter, but my one obviously is Relight Films. That came with the Relight mod. It kind of comes baked into the mod. Now the mod also has a few more things going on. If you press Shift, Alt and L, you get this little menu opening up here, although it's transparent, so I'll just look over the ocean here so we can see it a bit more clearly. So effectively, these are the settings I've gone with. I think I've only barely touch the default settings you're kind of given with Relight. Obviously the color correction LUT is one thing, but then you can kind of fiddle around with the exposure, the contrast, the contrast, and a few other things here. And then you're kind of given a preset. So mine's just called Main. And if you want to grab my exact preset, it'll be in the description as well. So you just grab that, it'll say Relight, and you're going to place it into your Relight Presets folder. So this folder is basically in your app data. So app data, local, colossal order, city skylines, mod config and then you should have a folder that will appear here once you install Relight called Relight Presets and then mine will maybe be called Darren.Light. You'll drop that in here and you'll just see it and you can just click load and it should just work. So it should be straightforward enough. If not, take a screenshot. These are just the settings. It's simple as that. Now, while we were looking at these options anyway, so we're in the graphics options, we've just adjusted to Relight Film. There's also then just my general settings, right? So turn off depth of field. I like depth of field, but it messes up when you have different kind of post-processing effects running, and I'll talk about that a bit later. You also want to turn off anti-aliasing. Again, it's going to look rough at first, but we'll fix it later with another mod. So you want to go up to obviously the highest settings for everything else. If you want film grain, you can throw it on there. Just the important thing to note is disable depth of field and disable anti-aliasing. 
Next is going to be the mod Realistic Version 1.5.5 Temperate. So this is what you select when you're starting out the game for the first time. You select the sort of biome that you want for your map. And this is going to give you the various textures that I have active in my game right now. So some people had asked, how do you get those sort of leaves on the edge of grass and things? That comes with the realistic temperate biome map. Now, I think if you find it that you are using a map on the workshop or something and it's not compatible, um, there's another mod that actually allows it to be compatible. I apologize, I can't remember the name, but if you... Maybe search biome compatibility or climate compatibility. There's a mod that lets you change it for existing save files. So you can actually change it mid-game rather than having to set it at the beginning. Or if there's a map that specifically doesn't want to swap, you could try force it. This one obviously doesn't have to do any of that. It just works right out the box. So if you're using Hearts Hill, you can use Realistic Temperate with no problems. Now it's worth mentioning as well that Realistic Temperate comes with its own LUTs baked in. So we have Realistic version 1.2. And you'll notice that it just, it adds a bit more vibrancy, a bit more color to things. It kind of flattens the light as well, just a little bit. So, this was actually what I was intending to play the game as originally, and I just thought it was a little too bright for my liking, so I've gone back, like I said, to realistic, or sorry, relight film. Okay, so the next two mods are going to be Render It and Play It. Now, Render It is effectively a series of post-processing effects and some of the in-game effects as well that I played around with for a while. You're going to have to copy my actual file for this one if you want to get the exact settings there's just far too much to go through so basically you go into the options you've got these different categories like post processing we want to turn on TAA and that's how you get like a smoother edge to all your buildings and objects and things like that and then there's a bunch of different settings like ambient occlusion is how I kind of got the shadow maps around the edges of buildings um, so you go into amb ambient occlusion edit those are the settings I have for that so there's just far too much to go through but what you can do is import my file. So mine's just called Darren060623 at the moment. And if you were to click export, you just get basically a big text file. So you can have that in Notepad and just have that text file, which is what I'm gonna give you guys. So if you go into the description, you'll get the render it export settings. What you can do is just on your desktop, for instance, just copy and paste all of the text in that file. And then when you're going into render it, just go to import, not export, obviously you're importing settings. So you click import and you'll just paste it in here, click import and it'll basically just work. And then you can just hit save if you wanna make sure it doesn't get deleted or whatever, or you can adjust it further and make it customize it to your, uh, to your own liking. So that's effectively how you're gonna get that to work. I also had another version here, which I was initially using for a little while, which makes things a lot darker. You can kind of use that at nighttime if you want, so I'll give out both and I'll name them so that they're a bit more clear. But this one is just a lot darker than the original, so I, I keep it this way and a lot of people say this is even too dark and it is getting to the end of the day right now, it's darkening things a bit. So that's where Play It comes into effect. Now Play It is really just a mod to change some of the game settings as it's being played. Speed up the game like we can speed up the simulation quite a lot here all the way to times three and then if we obviously speed up time even further we can go really fast but I actually keep it on a pretty realistic setting, which is about 0.55. The reason for that is, if you see people walking the streets, they kind of walk at a very natural human speed at this level. I'd say they're even walking a little fast. You could probably bring it down a little bit, but it's a nice middle ground of, yeah, this is a believable look to the city when we zoom in. It would almost be a nice thing if you could tie this to your scroll wheel. So as you zoom out, the speed goes up, and as you zoom in, the speed goes down. That'd be a nice little feature, but anyway. I digress. So that's how you get that. The reason I'm showing you play it though at all is because the most important thing would be, let's just say it is daytime, the latitude and longitude of our settings basically determine where we are in the world, therefore determining where the sun is going to rise and fall. Now I'll probably change this every now and then throughout the, the series, I just tend to do that sometimes, but generally speaking 60 degrees and negative 16 degrees is roughly where I have my sun position or where we have our position I guess that gives you the kind of same day and night cycle that I'd be getting in terms of where the shadows are going, wh which buildings get, you know, lit and how they get lit and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right, so the very last things then would just be the FPS booster. This is insane. It basically boosts your frame rate by double, or at least did for me. It's effectively reducing the amount of draw calls that the UI is having. Apparently the UI is just going mental all the time. So by reducing the amount of times the UI is trying to refresh itself, the FPS goes massively up. So that's a really, really, that, I couldn't live without that mod. That that one is awesome. 
Now, as well as that, we've got some extra ones here I won't touch on for too long, but if you wanted to paint your own surfaces, you have the surface painter, extra landscaping tools is kind of the same thing, and then the intersection marking tool, which allows you to, if we just hop back into the game, basically create little, um, you know, little markings like this. I would recommend looking up a video on how to use that and how to control it. Uh, there's lots of great tutorials about when and where you should actually put these markings down and how to use them appropriately so i recommend going with that there are of course other mods out there tons of mods in fact which have more detailed vehicles all that kind of stuff but like i said i was trying to keep my frame rate pretty good so i largely just affected the climate the environment the post-processing not necessarily all the textures in the game because it would just be a bit too demanding i think even for good pcs Alright, so that's pretty much it for the graphical setting. So hopefully, with all that information, you can now recreate the look and feel I have for my game, or maybe be adventurous, go experiment with the settings yourself, and find something that you like. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.